Coming up today, commodities continue to rip, led higher by gold. Why there's still room to run. Oil breaking out above key resistance. On rising Middle East tensions. Inflation concerns rising, sending stocks lower. Tesla dives after a big first quarter delivery miss. And why Ray Dalio is still investing in China. So it looks like the stock market may be starting to react to these rising commodity prices and growing expectations that the Fed may not be able to cut rates in June like everybody had been hoping. And just looking at key markets trends here, we're definitely having a pullback in the short term. Major indices underneath their five day moving average, key leading indices as well, semis, consumer discretionary, industrials, financials, and we've also got the spreads of growth versus value and high yield bonds. Now underneath their medium term 50 day average, whilst we've got inflation expectations, dollar index, utilities, gold and oil, green across the board above all time frames. And just looking at the chart of the S&P 500, you can see we are losing trend and momentum here. My trend strength just about to go into negative after being blue. Since mid November, had a strong parabolic rise, well overdue for a bit of a pullback if not correction here and interesting today out of the nine main u.s stock indices i'm watching here we've just had the first one lose its 50-day vwap just by a couple of ticks here that's the nasdaq equal weight etf triple qe and that's the second time it's closed below its 50-day volume weighted price in a couple of weeks and prior to that we hadn't closed below there since this rally kicked off back in early november we also got the vix popping up a bit here today trading above a 15 handle and pretty good rise in volatility risk premium option dealers starting to ask for a bit more premium over top of realized volatility here and also interesting today with a 10-year yield break out above its prior resistance, briefly getting above 4.4%. That could be upsetting the stock market a little bit, but bonds are still well and truly in a sideways market here. We've got a bit of a fall in Bitcoin, losing some momentum, trading around $65,000 a coin. Just looking at some hot stocks, there's Nvidia, still holding trend, and believe it or not, the place to hide out today was in stocks like Trump Media, up 6%. New AI stock to the market, Astera Labs up 1.5%, and cause why not, Reddit up almost 10% today as well. However, what's really in play in this market is commodities starting to wake up here. And this is having a halo effect right across financial markets today. You can see crude oil now trading above $85 a barrel. Trend coming back into this market. It's got some momentum here. And just looking on the weekly chart, this resistance zone I've had drawn in for quite a while now. We just took out today. And so it looks like this market is putting in a higher high, been basing for over a year, of which we could break out and we very well could come up and test $90 a barrel, potentially $95 a barrel in the coming weeks. But what's really leading the pack in terms of trend strength is gold. It's in a really strong momentum trend here. Looks to be walking the line. And this is the place to be at the moment. We've got stocks, bonds, and cryptos pulling back. And what's performing today is gold. And before I get into some of the fundamentals and news that's driving gold here, first we'll just take a look at overall investor positioning using some data from the World Gold Council. We can see total gold ETF holdings around the world currently at 3,125 tons. And that's still a sizable 20% lower from the peak back in March 2020 when it reached almost 3,900 tons. And that correlates with COMEX net long positioning back in March 2020 as well. When total net longs came in a little over $1 trillion, here we are today, 562 billion, off almost 50%. And looking at gold sediment via my FX book, who tracks tens of thousands of traders via brokers that plug in their data into their system, and overall positioning, believe it or not, is 66% short in gold, with a gross amount of net longs still well off highs as well. Not only that, looking at the largest CFD broker in the world, has clients all around the world, that's IG, and 56% of their clients are short gold. And just looking at Google Trends for the search term buy gold around the world over the last 10 years, that index is at 78, well off the peak of March 2020, when lots of people were searching for the term buy gold. And so just back to the weekly chart of gold, even though we've got a bull market here, breaking out to all time highs, got a lot of momentum, overall investor positioning is still really low. And we can see that in the largest gold ETF under ticker GLD. Even though it's got a huge 58.8 billion assets under management, that too is well off highs from July 2020 when it was at a whopping 78 billion. And in the prior gold bull market, we had more assets under management in this ETF even 13 years ago. So the point is, this could still have a lot further to run because typically markets don't top out till we get to that speculative bubble mania phase when everyone and their dog is in it. Leveraged call options, media mentions, 
Google searches, assets under management, all reach extreme levels. That's typically when we coincide with tops. And don't get me wrong here, on the daily chart, we're looking a little stretched. So we're bound to have a pullback consolidation soon. However, whenever you see a technical move like this in the short term, when the market's been basing and compressing up, then it breaks out on volume, and my trend strength indicator goes positive, that's a good signal for the medium term and long term as well. And just a quick update for those of you who have my custom indicators, I just renamed the indicator momentum scalper to momentum thrusts and changed the labeling from buy sell to up and down as I considered those names more appropriate for what the indicator is actually telling us. And so the last momentum thrust we got in gold was up on the 4th of March. These reversal signals you see here are best used when the market's ranging like we can see in the trend strength when it goes negative. However, when the trend strength goes positive, you don't want to take reversal signals as the market's trending. And just the fact that it's clean taken out, these reversal signals shows again that there's momentum in this market. And we've got a pretty nice move and momentum thrust upwards today in silver, up a huge 4% on really strong volume. And this market looks poised to break out as well now that we've got some momentum trend coming back in here. And so there's a good reason why investors, small and large, are significantly underweight commodities. And that's because a lot of them, the whole time they've been in the market, the last 15 years or so, they've done nothing but underperform growth stocks and tech stocks especially. So these investors, whom a lot of base their expectations just based on their own experience instead of history and data, are conditioned to believe that you should only invest in growth stocks, tech stocks, and Kathy Wood is their new savior. However, looking back in history, when we typically reach these levels of investor sediment positioning and the ratio of commodity prices to the S&P 500 typically marks the start of a commodity super cycle. Like we saw in the early 2000s, after the tech bubble burst, we saw it in the late 80s, going to the early 90s, into the Gulf War, and back in the 70s, high inflation we had back then. And it's a bit of a similar setup. Geopolitics now to the 70s, Israel under attack, US-led Western alliance coming to its defense, things ramping up. We've also got Russia involved, still the potential for China. And we could see a big response from Iran in the coming days, week or so, after Israel just bombed the Iranian embassy in Syria killing some top commanders. Last time Trump did that, Iran responded in kind and they absolutely hate Israel. So it'd be surprising if they don't respond in a big way. And that could be another reason why we're already seeing gold and oil rally. It's the market's front running this response from Iran. And so like I've been saying for a while, things are just escalating further and further over there, putting more of a tailwind behind commodities. And as investors, of course, we don't like to see this kind of thing, but we're trying to protect and grow our own wealth. And so at least as a hedge, a lot of you guys know, I've been heavily positioned in commodities across my portfolios for a while now. Some of my favorites being uranium, gold, agricultural commodities, in addition to being positioned in clean energy more as a long-term play. And this is coming at a time where we've still got energy stocks at record low relative valuations. So this thing, in my opinion, is just getting started. It could have years and years to run. Even if this conflict in the Middle East doesn't spill over, hopefully it does resolve. I still think commodities could have a really good bull market ahead of them. And that's because regardless of what's going on in Israel, Iran, Ukraine, Western countries are still grappling with embedded systematic inflation that's been caused from decades of overspending, record low rates, artificial Fed liquidity. And some people were just hoping this inflation would disappear after a year or two. However, it doesn't just work that easy. Sometimes the big forces causing inflation, which is always the government, you can't have inflation unless you have more money sloshing around in the system. It's literally what drives up prices. And we can see that in M2 money supply just prior to COVID, 15.3 trillion. A couple years later, here we are at 20.7 trillion. It's up more than a third in four years. So it's no wonder we've got bond yields going against Fed speak and rising now, as we just saw the 10 year yield breaking out of resistance and the whole narrative of inflation's going back to 2% seems to be reversing course here. We can see this in this bar chart of core inflation, seasonally adjusted annual rate. Looking at advanced economies, we can see the first quarter 2024 has actually increased from the second half 2023. And just like the price action in commodities, inflation lagging behind looks to be doing the same thing. Bottoming out and bouncing off that bottom. And so we've been seeing this for a little while. Bond markets repriced from six cuts to three cuts this year. Oil's been moving up inflation expectations, a few hot CPI prints, but the stock market hasn't really cared. However, it cared a bit today. And like JP Morgan said, the growing disconnect between continued stock gains and delayed rate cuts will eventually have to catch up with the market. Or it could be possible that somehow j Powell is still able to justify some rate cuts this year, in which case famous billionaire investor Steve Eisman 
could be right that we could get a big stock bubble if the Fed does cut rates. And maybe that's why the stock market is being continuing to hold on to its trend because even though we're getting signs of increasing inflation and the inputs into inflation going up, maybe the stock market still hanging its hat that the Fed can cut rates. Now, if Jay Powell were to come out with some slightly more hawkish tone, then we could get a big dip day in the market as it reprices in a matter of hours. So for now, we've still got Fed members like the Cleveland Fed president saying she still expects three rate cuts in 2024, but it's a close call. And San Francisco Fed chief striking a bit more of a hawkish tone now saying there's no urgency for the Fed to cut rates. That might have spooked the market a little bit today as well. And this is coming out of time. When the market has been hot, IPOs, meme stocks, cryptos, all the good stuff ripping up a lot of investor participation, heaps of call options being traded, which is still the case today. Options market is still pretty busy here and 56% of volume was in calls today. And we've already got important stocks underneath the hood like Tesla, not looking so great here, having a big fall today after missing on their first quarter deliveries. Coming in at 386,000 vehicles, well below Wall Street forecast of 450,000. Wedbush analyst Dan Ives said factory shutdowns in Germany and soft demand in China contributed to the miss. And these fourth quarter results not only missed expectations, but represent a year over year decline of 9% and 20% decline from its recent fourth quarter vehicle sales of 484,000. And so yeah, the fire in Germany didn't help things, but however, I think it's more soft demand in China, real big market for them. BYD coming in and a flood of cheap EVs coming out of China, not to mention these higher for longer rates, which affect large ticket purchases like Tesla's as a lot of people finance them. And just looking at the chart of Tesla, we fell today right down to the bottom of this support zone I've been watching. And just looking at the five minute chart, we did appear to get a bit of a buy the dip, bit of volume coming in there and defending those low 160s actually finishing up a bit higher than where we started off the day, especially pre-market. It got pretty oversold down there in the back of that news that just came out. And even though I'm a long term Tesla bull, my regular viewers will know I've been questioning Tesla's valuation for a few months now, and hence why I've been long the spread as a short medium term play. Long GM, short Tesla, and that just broke out again today up almost 4%. Another market I've been calling as undervalued for a couple of months is that of China here. And we traded up again here today and just going out to a weekly chart, we're pressing up against this multi-year downward trend line. And like I said at the start of this year, we may have put in a generational low in Chinese securities, especially if we can put in a higher high here, maybe come back down in a 50% retracement retest. And if we can hold above this support, then we may bounce off and start a stage two advance after completing a stage one accumulation process. And of course, China has its problems. It always has, it always will. But if you try and wait, for everything to be perfect before investing, then you're almost guaranteed to invest at the top. That's why we've got the owner of the world's largest hedge fund, billionaire Ray Dalio, explaining why he's still investing in China despite the 100 year storm looming. With him saying the best time to buy Chinese stocks is when they're cheap and everyone hates the market. And you can pretty much say that about every market. With him going on to say, I've invested throughout many cycles in many countries and learned the adage, the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. And as a bit of a contrarian myself, that's the same mantra I like to stick to as well. Although not easy in the short term, you have to be able to stomach a certain level of volatility, along with people constantly telling you that you're wrong. I'm with Ray Dalio on this one, just looking past the short term problems and media headlines now, and just looking at the cash flows you're actually buying, because that's all that really matters at the end of the day. And Chinese securities are still some of the cheapest in the world. So the economic data we got out today, so manufacturing PMIs, in the Eurozone coming out higher than expected as well, just like we saw in the States yesterday. It's amazing how synchronized the global economy is. Same deal in the United Kingdom, they're manufacturing PMI back into expansion territory and factory orders in the States coming in higher than expected. And we'll get some CPI inflation data from the Eurozone tomorrow, along with some services PMIs. And an interesting development in Fed fund futures today. Bit of an increase from yesterday that the Fed will cut in June. However, it appears this market is giving small probabilities now that we may actually see a rate hike. In which case, if these probabilities grow, it's going to be amazing if the stock market can continue to defend its 50-day VWAP in the face of that. But it's not given up hope just yet. Greed index still hanging in there at 63 and corporate insiders not doing much trading at all. And there's a look at high yield bonds just coming down to this support zone here. We're going to see whether that holds as a key indicator for risk assets. Dollar index sitting right at the top of its resistance zone. Uranium starting to pop back up here 
after consolidating for the last five months or so. There's the price action and cocoa, still pretty wild, hasn't even done as much as a small pullback yet, and we've still got clean energy consolidating and yet to prove it's found a bottom. International stock indices still uptrending, although having a little pullback here today, and there's gold versus S&P 500 breaking out there, and it's already been on a tear versus long data treasuries as well. Once again, spread of inflation expectations increasing today, and the new Bitcoin trust IBIT sitting right at its 50-day VWAP, with some strong leading sectors like home builders falling a bit over 2%. Semi still hanging in there, and apart from junior gold miners, it was energy stocks increasing nicely here today. On a momentum thrust upwards, trend strength really strong, and looking at its largest holding, Exxon Mobil, how many people are talking about this? This is starting to look like JP Morgan was a couple of months ago. Ripping up in a strong parabolic uptrend here, up almost 2% today. And that price action just reminds me of JP Morgan back in November, December, almost looking like the same thing. And that just went on to a parabolic uptrend, which it's still in. And we get to hear earnings from them in nine days. And a look at how they did in Q1. Big banks always kick off earnings season on a Friday, so it'll be interesting to hear what they have to say. We've got jobs data coming this Friday. We're we'll watching bond yields and commodities. Stocks are being tested here right now. They'll have to defend these levels, otherwise we could lose this parabolic uptrend we've been in since November. Definitely got some pullbacks happening in the short term. Volatility waking up, oil breaking out, 10-year yield breaking out, bit of a flight to safety in gold, energy stocks ripping, bit of defensive rotation into utilities, dollar going up, and inflation expectations. Not to mention, we're technically well overdue for a pullback. So all the ingredients are there for a stock market pullback, which could be already underway. Thanks very much for tuning in to the Click Capital Daily Market Review. If you haven't already, think about hitting that subscribe button as your support really does help out this channel. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Cheers.